45 plus 5 pounds of guts, it's a 50 pound king. Made it to the first spot, 85 feet of water. Look at this Seymour, dude. So sick. I'm gonna let the boys suit up and get in first, and then I'll get in on the next wreck. This is good, currents ripping. Dude, the fish should be around. The fish are gonna be here. Here in Palm Beach, you gotta, you gotta deal with some pretty serious current, but that brings the crystal clear water in and the fish. Really a big part of today is gonna be bouncing around and hitting a lot of spots, which you can only do with a really, really good crew. And that's what we got today. So we're gonna make the best of it. We got good weather, plenty of time. We got food, ice, water. We're ready to go, or RTG as Ryan would say. Well, first drop, water isn't that clear. I mean, we probably got like 60, 70 foot of this, which is still great, Bro. but beautiful dive, fish everywhere, giant shipwreck, and groupers, bro. Like I could have shot a, I don't know, a 15 pound black, <laughs> a gag in the background, but very cool. I want to be on this spot at May 1st, man. That'd be so cool. That's so That'd be awesome. so cool. Okay, new spot, dropping them in first. I'm going to suit up real quick and then get in, kind of warm up a bit. We're in like... Get in and show us how it's done. Yeah, I'm going to get in and show Ryan how it's done. Um, so he's going to hop in the boat in a second. I'm just going to suit up right now. We're in like 80 and then we're going to go out to like 100. Had to turn it. Oh my God. Did you just stone him? No. No. Yes, uh, trying to eat him. <laughs> Yellow Jack comes cruising in super, super slowly. Doesn't even have a care in the world that Ryan's down there. And I don't know what happened, but he was like an inch from that stone shot, which is unfortunate because the Goliaths come up so fast. And luckily, he had Eric right there to fend him off. But it always surprises me how far those groupers will swim off the bottom to try to get your fish. So here's my first dive of the day. You'll see the wheelhouse of this ship sits like 20 feet above everything else. And so it's a perfect spot for me to do my warm up dive. That wheelhouse also provides like the perfect structure for a big old residential fish to live in. So I always make sure to give a good peek before I turn around. And now being that I'm like 20 feet above everything else without hovering and moving the entire dive, it allows me to sit still and get almost like a bird's eye view of the whole wreck. Now in this dive, it was just barracudas, but always a good sign to see some life. Even when you're not seeing anything, these shipwrecks are still so fun because you're diving such a interesting structure. There's a few different ways to navigate this kind of wreck diving. This one, I know the wreck is like three to 500 feet long. It's absolutely massive. So I'm gonna go and hover and allow the current to take me over it and cover as much ground as possible because I don't have the bottom time to pull the fish a couple hundred feet away straight to me every time. So as I'm scanning, I spot a nice yellow jack, which is not out of the ordinary at all for this wreck. I hesitated right here and pulled the gun back. And then I took a little bit of a longer shot right there, which wasn't the headshot that I was hoping for, but still a completely fine holding shot. lost him. Oh my God. <laughs> Isn't that wild? We were not joking around when we said that we were going to be hitting a lot of spots this day. And now we're on the Ryan cam. You're about to see some serious bottom time out in 95 feet right here. And he's just super slowly approaching the bottom, kind of spinning so we can find his perfect dropping spot, get a good hidden zone and see what he can call in. Something I've picked up from Ryan that I feel like has really been a big game changer is not kicking once you're on the bottom. If you wanna move, use your left hand or your non-dominant hand and pull yourself super slowly. Doesn't use much oxygen and really allows you to travel. So in this case, he's traveling up the wreck so that he can get a better look at some of these fish. He's scanning around and it looks pretty lively down there, but nothing crazy yet. 
So because he was so still, it attracted some dog snappers to come over and feel safe enough to really get a look at him. They want to see what he's doing. And right here, he closes that gap, takes a shot. And this is stressful, man. When you see a fish trying to go into a hole at 95 feet, you really want to make sure you get it out. And that's exactly what he's doing right here. You can see a Goliath down there already looking at him. I come down and I help him get this fish up. Diving on wrecks with high current really reduces your bottom time. So I was super impressed that Ryan got this two minute, 95 foot dive and landed the dog snapper in the same breath. Not the big one, but dude, you're an Aquato killer! Did you see me? Yes! We moved spots and I breathed up for like five minutes, so I was ready to do a really long dive and hopefully call some big fish in. But on the way down, I was surprised and saw a giant mutton snapper. You don't want to rush these things, especially when they're below you. They feel a bit intimidated as you approach them, so you want to go super, super slowly for the dive bomb technique. Line up a shot right here and perfect. Just stone them, had plenty of breath, put them right in my hands, and that's how you know you're done. Don't have to worry about sharks or goliaths anymore. What a fish. We're all pumped on this. <laughs> You really do not see muttons like that in Palm Beach very often, let alone get a shot opportunity, which I'm so grateful for. So earlier while Eric and I were diving, we were in like 90, 100 foot. And oh my God, this ledge, when I tell you it had life, I'm, you know, I'll show the video right now. Spade fish all in front of my face, freaking more mangrove snappers than I can count. And just overall an insanely healthy, lively ledge. So Ryan and I are going to go back out there and go dive it together and hopefully pull something insane off of it. One thing we're always looking for when we're diving these deep ledges is lobster. So Ryan's on his way down and spots an antenna and he knows I want that for dinner. 82 feet deep right here and he's got kind of a weird hole but it makes him able to grab it tail first and pull it out effortlessly. So that is freaking sick. No way! Bro! Get out of here! That's amazing! More than legal, that's a really nice freaking bug! Fox, dude, sick! So now it's my turn. I took like three, four minutes to breathe up because I really wanted to go down and search for some lobsters. And I'm looking, we're on some odd hard bottom, but this is really the perfect structure to find those small holes that don't get dove every day and find some antennas. So kind of just cruising, waiting for the current to take me over the good stuff. And I'm not seeing any antennas. Little bits of life here and there. And something I love about the lobstering is you never know where you're gonna see some fish. Unfortunately, no lobsters, saw no antennas. So I decided to head up so I wouldn't have to breathe out too long for my next one to try again. But on the way up, the last thing I expected happened. Look at all these kingfish approaching me. I was lucky enough to be right at like 35, 40 feet to where I was neutrally buoyant, didn't have to kick, didn't scare anything, and took a beautiful shot on a giant kingfish. Ryan gives me the look of, bro, that was not the lobster I was expecting you to come up with. And now the fight's on. Things already almost spooled me, and now Ryan needs to take another shot. So he's headed down. And it can be really difficult with these big fish because they see you coming and they have a lot of fight in them. So the second that you are about to pull the trigger, you get in range, they just do another extra two kicks and keep right out of your shot. So he's about to and cannot get the shot. So he comes up, ends up handing me his gun, and I take a dive. Luckily, can get close enough 
take a shot right there and we knew we were getting this fish at this point. Ryan makes a dive to assess how the shots are. You can see that second shot really started bleeding out this fish, but they still have some fight in them. Like that fish is still kicking pretty dang hard for bleeding out. <laughs> After an incredible freaking day of Palm Beach diving, we're done, man. We're all beat, ready to go in. And I'm not trying to cook this fish today. I'm freaking exhausted. So what we're gonna do is bring it over to the restaurant behind my house, Old Florida Bar and Grill, and have them cook it for us. So it's gourmet style and everyone can relax. So we're gonna head in. Woo! <laughs> oh, that's a box. Oh, that's a box. And that is a dry kingfish tail. Nice, <laughs> nice. Okay, he's, he got bigger. Bro, he's giant. Neighbors are gonna come through and say, what? No, not that thing. I'm not touching it. Nope. <laughs> Coming down. All right, we just weighed me, and I was conveniently 175 even. On the dot. Let's give it a shot on the thinner scale. <laughs> yes. 220, 220 pounds. 220, so how big is that? Well, that uh, 25 and 20, 45 pounds. Is it 45? 45 plus five pounds of guts, that's a 50 pound king. Bro, that's a giant. Woo! Giant, it's like a world record. This is like a world record. <laughs> Freaking sweet day. It's really rare, honestly, that I'm pulling the trigger more than one or two times in Palm Beach, so couldn't be more pumped. Nice yellow jack right there. Honestly, I think this is the fish of the day right here. Without a doubt. It was beautiful. So glad I took my time and ended up getting that stone shot. Man, pump. So that's what we're gonna be eating in just a couple minutes. So first, let's fillet up this kingfish, get it prepared for the smoker, and then I'm gonna cut that mutton up. And we're gonna go feast. He's a giant. Stoked, time to cut. Got those beautiful nuggets. Look at that, mutton snapper, a little bit of yellow jack. Just got over to Old Florida Bar and Grill. We're gonna do the cook your catch option. Get some fried, maybe something else. Let's we'll see what happens. Swimming around just a couple hours ago. This is the perfect way to end the day. Nobody felt like cooking, and uh, the restaurant always feels like cooking. <laughs> Talk about the ultimate catch cleaning cook. <laughs> you didn't have to do the cooking. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Me and you didn't even have to do the cleaning. <laughs> yeah, that's it. One bite. Everybody knows the rules. <laughs> Look how flaky this is. Stupid. Coconut, sweet. Flaky white fish, freaking stoked. What an amazing day. I had so much fun. Glad Ryan's back in that diving mode. Finally, those sinuses are fixed. And all of us were doing 80 plus foot dives. Had so much fun. Thank you guys for watching this video. We're gonna catch you all in the next one.